I had some three hour sleeps in support stations um, near the beginning. I wanted to keep my, my sort of energy levels high. Um, and then as I went along, I didn't have a plan. I just slept what I thought was necessary. Um, but I also slept at times when it took me longer to get to the sports stations off the bike, like on the side of the road, just because I needed to. I was dangerously incompetent in that you zigzagging and you, at times you find yourself like blanking out. I've never done a race such as the one that I've just had now on the Freedom Challenge where I've had such an awesome WhatsApp fan club. I mean, Jeannie put together and invited friends um, onto this group chat and the amount of um, positive energy that I got from it was just crazy. I actually used it as a means of in my darkest hours to lift me up. So I never read anything through the day, but at night when I was wobbling off my bike or got hit by that headwind and couldn't, uh, didn't think I could make it to the next support station because I was so shattered, I'd sit on the side of the road and I'll open my phone and start reading the WhatsApp. And with friends saying, Mart, we believe in you, you can do it. It actually, it, it gave me a, a new sort of level to operate on and that it allowed me to step forward and get onto that uh, get back onto my bike to get to the next transition when I think if I didn't have that chat group to fall back on it would have just made it so much harder. And I've always used a hardtail for freedom just minimal less to go wrong but a couple of years ago I was being a hero on an obstacle course showing Jeannie how to do a somersault off a cargo net saying this is what I did at high school and I did it and I slipped a disc and needed to have a back operation to shave the disc and since then I've been very um, careful with my lower back and so much so that I've gone to dual suspension so I use the Cannondale a lefty which I have been using as my current bike but I changed the lefty to a Fox fork because I wanted a Dyna hub to be able to recharge um, my phone and light and so and I've never gone high tech before so I decided to go that route and the dual suspension I think counted for a lot although it is a lot heavier and all that but I was I was keen for a, a plush ride and to make it as comfortable as possible and so on my bike the setup I went for I always use 2x10 um, and I was hoping to use 2x11 but for some reason it just it was given to me as 1x11 and I used it in some training rides and it worked nicely. Um, a friend of mine, Anton Mabry, made a massive impact with my race setup in terms of he's very race uh, orientated in his mindset and he gave me the mindset that Martin if you want to beat your record you need to be competitive from a race point of view like having a better race setup but the basics I'd carry were that I'd have a base layer and then I'd have um, uh, a fleece top and a rain jacket, a lightweight rain jacket. Um, I had leg warmers, but I also had rain pants. I had seal skin socks up to knee length, uh, which are hugely warm and also any water that you've got to go through, it just keeps your feet dry, even though your shoes are wet because they're like, like a gumboot. Um, I had big warm gloves and also had a set of lightweight inner nylon gloves and a gaiter, uh, like a hand gaiter, where it was a shell, a nylon shell, like a mitt, so that if those heavy duty gloves got wet, I could still have another set of gloves with a nylon and the gaiter, but also if it rained, I could put the gaiter, the mitt, over the, the heavy duty uh, warm gloves. The other things I had were just quite a bit of spares, not a tire though, but just the, the like chain, pieces of chain, uh, all the links, pliers, spokes, um, gaiters for tires, plug kits, um, uh, you know, just your multi-tool and bombs and actually a pump, hand pump, which I'd use before using a bomb just to save the bombs. The bombs would be if I cut the tire and then you put a gaiter in and you had to get it back. I wouldn't just use it to pump the tire if it was soft. If you're thinking of doing the Freedom Challenge, well, don't hesitate, sign up. But if you're a person that hasn't done anything like that before, like adventure based, then I'd say do the right to roads the first six days before and then make a decision. That's probably to me in a way the hardest part of the race. It's quite rural, a lot of elevation gain, and you'll get a good understanding for what the freedom's about. 
But if you do decide to do the freedom itself, first hand, um, don't set yourself too many, too less days, because if you're going to do 15 days or less, you've got to do night navigation, and you need visuals with the narratives and the maps to be able to navigate at night. And if you go at night, you won't have that advantage and you will get lost. Um, I'd only say go at night and do 15 days or less if you know the route. Um, there's an option where you, where you start in your batch to hook up with the other guys and you form alliances and you go through the race itself. But it's a, a bucket list for anyone who's got a sense of adventure.